you know, he's respected greatly by the boys and, um, you know, it'd just be great to see him go out with a win. Yeah, look, it's going to be a, a bit of a strange place without him. He's been here for that long and, uh, you know, he's normally one of the first blokes you talk to and uh, it's, it's going to be a different place without him, but I'm sure he'll be around a fair bit and uh, he'll be like one of those blokes in uh, two, three years' time. He'll come down to the club and we'll forget who he is. And, if he run the raffle. Uh, yeah, we'll say, uh, somebody will say, oh, that bloke out there used to play here and uh, we, we won't believe him because he'll probably be bald and fat and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> won't be able to fit through the door, but uh, you know, good luck anyway, mate, and uh, I'm sure whatever he does, he'll be a success. Well, uh, I'm now joined by St Kilda legend and uh, club's record holder, Stuart Lowe, as he's about to play his last game. We're here at his palatial house in uh, Bowie Morris. Mate, how are you feeling coming to your last game? Yeah, mixed emotions, Tomo, no doubt. Um, a bit of relief, uh, but also very sad. I, I suppose uh, 10 weeks ago it was probably pretty easy um, with the emotion that I felt back then to, to say, yeah, this is going to be it. But, um, yeah, certainly as it's getting closer, it's uh, it's going to be very tough to say uh, this is going to be it. But on the flip side of that, I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to the next phase of my life as well. In the 17 years, the conditions of the grounds would have changed a lot and the game's changed. Can you tell us what you think has been the biggest difference in the game and also perhaps the worst conditions that you've ever played in? I'll, I'll answer that the reverse. The worst conditions, very easy. My first game uh, of league footy in 1986, 24th of May, the day after my 18th birthday down at Moorabbin, there was not a blade of grass. It was literally mud from goal square to goal square and um, literally the entire 86 season was like that down at Moorabbin. Um, so uh, absolutely, Moorabbin would be um, out and out. Probably one other day out at uh, Waverley where we played in hailstones that were literally the size of uh, marbles. Um, and uh, yeah, that was pretty trying. We played Brisbane Bears that day, so uh, they were a bit shell-shocked and uh, we actually we pumped them. Um, what was the next question? Yeah, just the way the game's changed in 17 years. It's obviously got a lot faster, but is there anything in particular that you can say, well, that never used to happen? I think that the thing that really stands out in my mind, when I started obviously playing in the forward line, um, you lined up on either a full back or a centre half back and, and that was your position for the game. Um, nowadays everyone's so versatile, um, you've got guys playing behind the ball, um, they're flooding, um, the game's a lot more defensive and I think that's come about with obviously there's, you know, there's four or five coaches at each club now and each of them have got you know, specific roles to look after and I just really think the defensive side of the game has, has really come to the fore and you know I really I love watching um, you know the Foxtel footy vaults at the, the old games and seeing some of the games um, that we played in the 90s they were real shootouts you know 140 to 130 um, was was you know pretty standard sort of a game so from my point of view I think the uh, the real attacking style of footy has definitely changed and it's become a lot more negative. Now, mate, uh, there's uh, obviously a lot of highlights in 17 years. Your best game or your most enjoyable game, what was it? Oh, I've no doubt um, the North Melbourne uh, prelim final at the MCG whereby we, uh, we pumped and we, um, we came out firing and um, just had a super game and um, I managed to get a few kicks as well and uh, obviously uh, that was the introduction to the grand final week. Um, so definitely that's, um, that's one of the real highlights. Just, just some of the marks that he's taken for a for a guy like the the size of him to get up as high as he has and uh, take some crucial marks whether it be down forward or up back and uh, that, that's just a highlight. Just seeing him launch himself above a pack and uh, squash half a dozen blokes below him. Yeah, I've got a few. The, probably his dashes down the wing, bouncing the ball. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's actually um, he's actually given me some some good amusement doing that over the years, especially when I've been injured. I always get to derive a lot of enjoyment out of that, but. A few of his, uh, a few of his games that he's played. Um, I remember a final against um, Collingwood in '92. It would have been an elimination final. He just dominated. He took about 16 marks, and 
and dominated the game and that was pretty common practice for him. Um, he used to take anywhere from 14 to 18 marks pretty regularly in a game and I suppose yeah, a lot of people, um, especially the, even the younger players at the club, haven't seen that and um, you know, I remember those games pretty pretty vividly, especially here at Moorabbin, um, dominating games from centre forward. And obviously in your time there's a lot of individual honours, I think you've taken over 2,500 marks, nearly 600 goals, runner up in the best and fairest I think three or four times, won at once. EJ Winton medalist, is there anything that I've missed out that you really enjoyed or what would be your biggest highlight? Um, I suppose obviously the, the best and fairest was great but, um, but the, the, uh, the Clubman Award uh, I really hold, um, hold strongly and um, that's always um, been a, an award that, uh, that Kenny Whiffin and the trade, trainers have, have given to the players and uh, I think Tommy you've won it a couple of times and, and myself um, likewise and uh, you know, I really cherish that. Um, it's it's the people that make a footy club, and um, and to be regarded as as, as a great clubman to me was a, it was a huge honour. Footy trips, what's been your most enjoyable? And uh, you've been to some fairly exotic locations. Yeah, what would you recall as your best memories from footy trips? Yeah, that's that's an easy one, Tomo. Um, Kenny Sheldon's first year at the club, <laughs> um, he took the entire club on a pre-season junket to uh, to Waikiki. And um, you know we were all pretty young back then, and um, you know he really showed us uh, how to party and also how to train and, and work hard. And uh, I think, as I've no doubt that um, that really galvanised the side. It was the first time for a while that we'd actually gone away as, as a group, and uh, it was a great, it was a great trip. And uh, I suppose probably one of the highlights also was uh, at the end of a very late night. Danny Craven and myself found ourselves at the 40th floor of this penthouse apartment, uh, won't say with who, but uh, I just decided to um, to grab Danny by, uh, by the legs and dangle him out of the window <laughs> for some unknown reason at uh, about 4 o'clock in the morning, sobered very quickly and, and pulled him out, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, there's a lot of great memories and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a part of you know, footy that I really enjoy and, and it's... Uh, it's, it's times like this that you reminisce and when you get together with, with the old guys and that you have played with and shared some uh, memorable moments with, it's, uh, it's those type of examples that you bring up and talk about and, uh, and laugh about. Now, once footy's finished, you've obviously set yourself up fairly well with the building business. Uh, you're planning to spend a bit of time down the club or will the business, take, and, business and family take uh, more of a priority? Oh look, I'd love to. I, I said right from the start, and and, and Tomo um, hinted that there might be a, a role for me to play next year. But um, I'm yet to sort of formally sit down with him, and and I really just want to get through the year and enjoy it, and um, and um, have a bit of a relax, um, you know, over the next couple of weeks, and then I'll I'll sit down and work out what I want to do. Obviously, um, I'm fortunate to have come through an era where I, I have been able to um, get a trade and, and a business. Um, background and, and I'm really looking forward to and eager to start that and uh, if you pan around here there's a hell of a lot of work for me to do here this is sort of a, a two-year work, work in progress but um, in saying that I, I don't think I could go cold turkey from footy I, I really think um, you know I'd love to stay involved in some way shape or form so um, you know hopefully there'll be some sort of a role for me to play next year at the club. Just coming up to your last game is there anything that you really want to achieve in the last game or are you just going to hope to go out there with a win? Yeah, look, obviously I want to perform well, and uh, but more importantly, I just want to sing the song, Tomo. That's uh, that's what I really want to do. Just just taste some success, and uh, I think uh, we all deserve it. I think we've um, we've just battled hard and persisted, uh, and and we're definitely playing some good footy. We're just. Um, I suppose after the last couple of weeks, just unable to to put four quarters away and put a side away, but um, you know that that's just inexperience. All the best for your last game. It's been a pleasure playing with you, and uh, I'm just can't wait to get out there and uh, knock Melbourne off and do it for you. Good on, mate. Thanks, Tom. Well, congratulations, Lowy, and certainly all the boys down the club. Wish you all the best for your last match against Melbourne at Colonial Stadium on Saturday night. But before that game on the Friday, 10 o'clock. It is Lowy's last training session. It would just be fantastic to see all the St Kilda supporters get down here and watch him go through his paces for the final day. And then, of course, after the game, at about 10.30 in the victory room, there is a presentation to Lowy um, just to commemorate this wonderful occasion. And all St Kilda supporters are invited. It's a $5 entrance fee unless you are a social club member where, of course, you do get in for free. So that will be just well worth getting along to and, uh, and see Lowy just uh, say a few words after the game and at the end of his career. We do need all the supporters to get there to Colonial 
It's a very big game, it's a wonderful occasion and all your support is very much appreciated. So let's uh, make sure you get there and watch Lowy take a few big grabs in his last match. That's all we got time for on Saints TV this week and I'll look forward to seeing you at the same time next week.